may this church assembly have deacons, deaconesses, and pastors, but they are church of carnality. How do we know them? In the same chapter 2, say, do that in the flesh cannot understand spiritual thing. Do that are carnal cannot understand spiritual thing because it is spiritually designed. But do that are in the spirit and do that are spiritual. We have the wholesome understanding of God's mind. In the time we are in, what do we imply by the reward of a prophet? I am not always comfortable in preaching or teaching on the subject matter, giving or raising of fund for God's work or project, especially when it concerns me. I'm always shalling, ashamed to do so, but nevertheless, it is divine minded call and commission. If I refuse to preach the wholesome truth, the absolute truth, the undying truth, the unchanging truth, it will eventually amount to disobeying the same God who I am trying to serve. And also denying the church God's great opportunity, the church and brethren, God's great opportunity to sow in God's divine project. To amass spiritual wealth in God's treasure house where the thieves does not enter, where the rust does not enter, where canker does not enter, where you will enjoy everlastingly in God's kingdom. Then it also amounts that if you could not plant there, you cannot also reap ham suddenly in your lives, but now, and your families, in your businesses, in your ministries, even life eternal hereafter. Because whatever a man soweth, that shall he also what? Reap. Galatians chapter 6. From this five, for so from the six, let him that is taught in the world communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. It is in agreement with what Jesus said. He that has been taught, preached to, by the one preaching to you, your pastor, your prophet, your teacher, your bishop, or whatever, whosoever title, you also in turn should not withhold good things of life towards them. But you that receive that ministration should also communicate, care for, cater for him that teacheth you in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sweat, that shall he also reap. For he that sweat in his to the, his flesh, to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that straight to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Not only material, life everlasting. And let us not be weary. Don't be tired in what we're doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not as, as we have therefore opportunity the grace the financial one with all, the material one with all, the mental one with all, and every other thing, the endowment, that's opportunity. 
opportunity to be worthy, opportunity to have to give, opportunity to contribute. As far as we have that opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are what? Of the household of faith. This scripture was written before I was born. It was written before fishers of men ministry came to be. So it's older than fishers of men. It's older than your pastor who is preaching now. It's older than any other persons. So let's listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. And the scriptures say, let him that have ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. First Timothy chapter 6. Verse 17 to 19. Church them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. Your trust will not be in money. Money will not be your God. Nothing of this life, education, degree, job, profession, should not be your God. Your flesh and your blood will not make heaven. Your money, your car, your houses, and your edifice will not make heaven. Therefore, your trust should not be in them, nor trust in uncertain riches. But in the living God, who lives forever and ever, from eternity to eternity, from ages to ages, he lives. He never dies. Bible says, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. This is it. That they do good. Do good with your life, with your talent. Do good with your potentials. Do good with your wisdom, your understanding. Do good with your, you know, spiritual endowment, financial endowment, material endowment, even position your offices. Do good with them, that they be rich in good works, not in bad works. Ready to share, to distribute, to cooperate, to communicate, willing to communicate. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation, a solid foundation, enduring foundation against the time to come. What time? The time of dissolving all elements in the world. A time when all the elements of shall be dissolved according to Second Peter chapter 3. And shall melt away with fervent heat. If your trust in them is in them, you melt away with them. If your hope and life is in them, you melt. But if your hope is in the living God, then we are told that in the time to come, that they may lay hold on what? On dollar, euro, pounds, naira, doshima. Friend, whatever currency, they should lay hold on what? On eternal life. Eternal life is non negotiable. Satan cannot offer it. Satan cannot give it to you. The world don't have the answer. It's only God. And that is why in Acts chapter 20, 35, Paul writing to the church in Ephesus say, For God loves a cheerful giver. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 and 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 and 7. 6 and 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 and 7. And he said in chapter 9, 6 and 7. And he said, But this I say, he which sweat sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sweat bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to as, according as he had proposed in his heart, 
So let him give, not grudgingly. Don't give grudgingly. Or of necessity. For God loves a shuffle. God loveth what? A shuffle. Not grumbling giver. Not murmuring giver. Even though sometimes sowing is with tears. Sowing is with, um, you know, tears. I think I, as, um, Acts of Apostles chapter 20, we start first, we were talking about it is more blessed to give than to do what? Than to receive. Many people in the church, all they want is receiving. Bless me, give me, every Sunday, give me, give me. They are not giving. The Bible says it is more blessed to, to give than to do what? Than to do what? Than to receive. Now, what are we implying? We're saying that everything you have was given to you by God. Your life was given to you to serve him. Your money was given to you to serve him. Your wisdom was given to you to serve him. All your financial, material, numerical endowments you are given to serve him. Even though everything you have, the wisdom to make money is from God. Agai chapter 2, 6 to 9. The Lord can make and also mar. The Lord has the power to do and to undo. That is why you must fear him in whatever you do in the house of the Lord. I read, for thus say the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. In Ukraine now, it's war zone. Nobody's talking about business there now. Not nobody's talking about banking. In part of Russia, that community, that area, is crisis zone. God is checking that area. There are people that will be made millionaire because of that crisis. There are people that will be made millionaire because of that crisis. There are some countries who are helping to destroy, they will go and repair it again and make money. COVID-19, God used it to check what? The whole world. There are people that COVID-19 produced as millionaire, millionaire. They find solution early. Amen? But in this very context, the Lord will check this world. We check heavens. We check economy. We check a, a educational system. We even check the church, the houses of God. We check pastors. You started checking already. Amen. Amen. The real pastors are dying now. Reverend fathers. Are dying. Now it's showing us that nobody is exceptional now. Nobody is untouchable. Therefore, if you're here, the Lord said. I should tell you, the silver you're hoarding, meaning money. The gold you're hoarding, meaning money. He said it belongs to him. He is the one that gave it to you. Amen? Why? In Isaiah 43, verse 21, say, These people have I formed, created, made for myself, that they might show forth what? My praise. Everything God made out of it is for his praise, for his glory, for his honor. All that he has given to you, you, you use it to serve the Lord. But if you are not using it to serve the Lord, you must serve the devil. And remember, whatever you sow, you reap. Now the Lord said, when I be checking the nations and checking the earth, even the sea are not left out. The moon, the stars are not left out. Everything that's checkable, according to Hebrew chapter 12, anything that can check will be checking. But as a good news, why these things are happening, the Bible says, I will make the desires of all the nations. 
their desire, their interest to come to this house, the house of God. And they shall bring their glory, meaning their wealth, their power, their influence into this house. For you to know that the silver is mine and gold is mine. And the glory of the little house that you are asked to build for me will be greater than the former says the Lord. Then, for children of Israelites, this was directed to them. In Deuteronomy, chapter 8. If I understand it very well, we start from 16. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna? Quit thy father's new not, that he might humble thee that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy later end. And thou say in the heart, my power and the might of my hand had gotten me this world. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he, not you. It is he not government. It is he, not the president. It is he, not your bank. It is he that giveth the power to get what? To get wealth. To wealth for what? Is it just wealth? Yes, anybody can get wealth. But when you get wealth, what do you do with wealth? When you get money, what do you do with money? When you get job, what do you do with proceeds of that job? When you are promoted as police inspector general or DPO or as army officer, what do you do with your power? Bible say he gave you to do what? To establish you. That they be established. We are in this covenant. If you have money, you don't have covenant with the creator. It will mess you up. It will ruin your life. If you have other human endowments, well with us, and you don't have covenant with the owner of your life, it profited you nothing. That he might establish thee. Oh Lord. That he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is what this day. If you are not born again, you are not in covenant. Because for this covenant it was with Abraham by circumcision. But it's a covenant that the Lord have established with us according to Jeremiah 31 from 31 to 34. He said in the last days, there's going to be another covenant called a new covenant that the Lord will establish between us and his son Jesus by the blood of Christ. And in those days, the laws of God will be written in our heart. No longer just Bible or letter is going to be written in our heart. And he will teach us all things. And nobody will tell another, no God. He said, all of us will know God. Why? The law is written in our world, in our heart. So if you have not gotten this revelation, just come to church, do one thing or the other. A member of church, I go to church. And at the end of the day, you have nothing at all that can connect you to heaven. Nothing at all that connected to your divine destiny. Then, just say, I hear that this church, they are helping people. I hear this church, God is answering their prayer. I hear that this church, they are good people. And you come, but you are not established a relationship with your maker. Then, what shall it profit you? Even if you gain the whole world and lost your dear soul. Now, look at what we say here. Paul told us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, What did you have? 
what you got that was not given to you. Your beauty was given to you. Your handsomeness given to you. Intelligent to go to school, graduate and have a job was given to you. Children, husband, wife, landed property was given to you. Ministry to preach, to teach, is called the gift of ministry. It's a gift. I read, for who make it thee to differ? What make it to be special? Make it to be different? Who make it to differ from another? Why do you raise your shoulder? Why are you pompous? Why do you carry yourself like Satan, the devil, Lucifer? What hast thou that thou did not receive? That's a question. What do you have that you did not receive? A product of matter, dust and clay. Is it not where you're coming from now? If thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? Why are you boasting? Why are you proud? As if thou hast not received it. Therefore, it's a great pleasure, privilege for I and you to serve God. But there are many people who are worthy. The elites in the society, they are looking for God. They've gone to Saudi Arabia, they couldn't find him. They've gone to Israel, they couldn't find him. They've gone to Rome, they couldn't find him. Some of them have gone to different mountains and valleys. So many have turned to good works, helping the poor. They couldn't find what they're looking for. But free of charge, the Lord revealed himself to you. So, it is demanding. It is your responsibility. It's a love reciprocacy for you to reciprocate this love by laying everything God has given to you at the altar. I wasn't here on Thursday. My son preached. And the, the, my wife returned and gave me testimony. As I was telling him this morning that I heard that the Lord moved through you here Thursday. He said, he said, now God, oh. He said, now God gave power. That is true. He didn't take the glory. He said, what? He said, what? Do you believe that assertion? He said, I'm the one that gave you power to make money. Then why do you treat your wife as a slave? Why do you treat your wife as a visitor, as a stranger? When he married you, you have nothing. He was supporting you. You are now holding, you have gotten money. You push her aside and see him fault in her soup, in her washing of your clothes. Everything is fault. You did not remember it is my power of God. Why are you serving your husband and talking to him anyhow? Because you feel more beautiful now than when you were a girl. You're giving two or three children bed to three or four children. Your body revives. You become more, more whatever. And you're feeling your husband is just a nuisance. And you're feeling her dying. No. I found not married. If the sir, you know, sir, I found it like this. I found not married this man. Where your find come from? Who gave it to you? The money you are gathering now is for eventually it will eventually go back to the dust. Even the house we are talking about it will not rapture. It's where to put our heads. Abi? Jesus said the bears have nets. Abi? The forces have what? Holes. But the son of man has nowhere to what? Lay down what? His head. Even the ass, he rode to Jerusalem. He hired it. He borrowed it. He said, if anybody asked her, Master Nidam, where he did his Passover before he died, he said, tell the governor 
the steward of the man tell us, the master said, prepare for me what I'm going to do. He was commanding in the realm of the spirit. He has not. But yet today, he is the Lord of all. Was he poor? No. He was rich. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. But he made him say poor. That through his poverty, we might be what? We might be rich. So, God is never a beggar. He doesn't eat your food. He doesn't ride your car. He doesn't stay in your airplane. He so does not live in your duplex houses. He doesn't eat your yam or porridge. Whether it's American food, African food, London food, England, whatever. They are nothing before him. He is more interested in you. You are his image. You are his likeness. He wants you to live like him. Love like him. Humble like him. Simple like him. Caring like him. The Lord wants you to represent him as his ambassador. He gives you talent to sing. When you sing and people are crying, you cry more than those that are crying. When you preach, people are affected. You go back to your place and say, Lord, I am unworthy to preach this message. Please help me. If you go to evangelism, people responded to your message, come back and say, Lord, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Unworthy, unprofitable servant. I am. You decided to pass through me to convert somebody. Oh, God, is that how merciful you are? I'm reading a book of one Reverend Frank. He was once a priest, a Reverend Father, and uh, eventually uh, from monarch, monastery to that, thing, eventually two charismatic brethren, he became saved. They were the people who even lay hand on him. He was a and the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. As he was seeking and searching for God, at the time he resigned from priest, he got married. In fact, the person he, he God used him to heal, he married. But the type of way it was, God was working with him in intimate, intimate way, that one day there was a lot of miracles and healings, uh, so many things the Lord used him to do. As he went preach, uh, praying and sobbing, the Lord said to him, thank you, Frank, for allowing me to show my love to these people. Meaning, many of us are not allowing God to show what? Himself. But we are imposing ourselves. I'm the only last person in this century. I'm the only last prophet. If I die, none of you will go to heaven unless you follow me. If I die, you know, that since when I am the mom of the church, whatever I say, and people are following them. They detune Jesus from his church. They detune the father from his church. And they turn their pastors and their bishop and their reverend. Whatever the man say, whether it's in the Bible or not, the prophet don't say. Vision don't say. They don't even know that they have been led to hell. But God said to Frank, thank you. It was, God was thanking his servant for allowing him to use his life to show his love. What was his love? Healing Saving, delivering, forgiving, the concern is God showing his love. How do I mean? For God so loved the world. What did he do? He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever that believeth should not do what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Now, what am I trying to say here? When Peter and the rest of the apostles had this kind of message, do you know what Peter asked? Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Let's hear Peter's question. Twenty-seven to twenty-nine. And Mark chapter 10, 28 to 30. Then answered Peter. And said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. All our lives. All our positions in the world. All our fish farming. 
all our businesses, including our wives and children, our inheritance. We have forsaken all. All our money, and money pursuit, and follow thee. What shall we have thereafter? What shall be our reward? What shall be our benefit? What shall be our gain? Not just here, but even thereafter. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me to regenerate this generation. Oh, wonderful. In regenerating or regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Look at verse 29. And everyone, the answer to that question, that had forsaken houses, or brethren, or children, or lands, or mother, or wife. Okay, let me, I, I, houses and brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands. For my name's sake, not because of EFCC. For my name's sake, not because of witches are pursuing from the house. He said, Man, I can't take, man, I can't take. For my name's sake, shall I receive how many fold? How many fold? In heaven? In heaven? No. In this earth. Amen. Shall they see what? A hundredfold and shall, that is in this world, and shall inherit what? Life everlasting. That's the clamors. For you to understand it better, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Twenty-eight to thirty. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brother or brethren or sisters or father. Or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospel. But he shall receive a hundredfold now. Did he say now? Did he say now in this time? So not in heaven. We don't need all this kind of house in heaven. We don't need land in heaven. It is in this world that your promise hundredfold. As far as you give it in the name of the Lord. You give it for the gospel. Now what we are doing here today is for the Lord. And for the gospel. And we are told you will receive it 100% here in this lifetime. And we start it. But he shall receive 100 foot now in this time. Houses or house, brethren, sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands. With what? Persecution. What's a persecution? What's a persecution in this world? In the world to come, what? Eternal life. When you hear persecution, you'll be thinking about the fundamentalists from the north. No. Immediately a man said, Today, my wife, we're going to give one million naira, two million naira. He was say, I go leave this house, come up for your house. You remember the other problem? Remember the other problem? Our children, this and that. I beg you. No. Before the persecution don't come. And the wife said, the husband, since I've been praying concerning this thing, look at how much I'm going to be. I did not get them, but I'm going to buy. The husband said, the Bible says, now the one where I approve, now you go, I'm not approved up. Law. Persecution have started. And eventually, somebody said, how much did you, you know, you know, 
you, you, you say, look at look at problem around problem 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 problem. You know, in human endeavor, problem never stop. Problem never what? Problem never cease. Then those who had others who gave quantum of money for the work of God. They went as I said, it's not the show. Say now you reach pass. How much you get for bank? If you know my if you see my account, it's church matter, they know they can't for head you. If you can't for head, you go, you go, you go, you go fall. Now for here, they can't for here. If you're heavy, you do what you if they're heavy, you do what? You, you check your way, the thing to wear. And they begin to criticize those who are givers. Condemn them. When they show say when I get money. And the person who have done that, we begin to be grieved. Wounded. Yes? You will receive persecution. That persecution. So that is why I have to say this. Jesus responds to this inquisitive, gullible, curious mind of Peter. In this way, what that what you forsake or give up for the sake of the gospel of Christ will be rewarded a hundredfold. In this world and after with eternal life. He will be added, also eternal life will be added. When Isaac was asked to sow by the Lord in Genesis 26, that God is interested in hundredfold, that Jesus made this statement, it was not new. For it has happened before in this planet Earth. In Genesis chapter 26, look at the truth of the matter as we revealed. From 12 to 14. And then Isaac saw in the land and received the same year. How many fold? Oh, are you with me in the Bible? In this scripture? Then Isaac saw, where? In that land. Which land? The land of Gara, where there's famine everywhere. The land, not palatable, not fruitful. In fact, economic crush, crunch, meltdown. As you see in the faces of almost everybody in Nigeria, the capital city of, of poverty in the world. Abi? Not me, Tokamo. Not me. We I never read them. We I never hear them. That Nigeria is the capital. Uh, uh, World capital, uh, well, poverty capital. I mean, you never hear them. But if it is true, if the assess assertion is true, you can see it in the face of people. All kind of criminality, crime, new invention, how to dwindle, kill, steal, do ritual for money. Because things are no longer the way it used to be. Now, it was in such a time that the gloomy state of the land of Gala, that Isaac had made up his mind to take all his family and all his servants and whatever to hit and to you know, leave the town and hit the world, other places. And the Lord said in the night, Isaac, don't go any place. Don't go back to Egypt. But I am going to show you a land where you're going to plant and prosper. As he said, my Lord of my father, Abraham, where do I say? In this land. Ah, daddy, everywhere is famine. Everywhere, nobody has anything to do. Things are, say, plant here. You are not, not the land. It is my covenant with your father. Amen. No what? Not the land. It's my covenant what? If you do it, I will prosper you. And after that assurance, we are told now, Isaac sowed in that land and received 
in the same year, it was specified, the same year, that he wanted to leave for, from Nigeria to America, to uh, South Africa, to other places. He said, don't go to be in a diaspora. No, don't go. That same year, he received a hundredfold. Now, what do you mean by hundredfold? If you sow one million naira today, what is a hundredfold of one million naira? I'm asking the church. Hundred million. If you sow five hundred thousand today, what is a hundredfold of five hundred thousand? Fifty million. If you sow hundred thousand, what is it? A uh, hundredfold of uh, hundred thousand. One million. Your gaze is as mine. God is looking for so as. Then, if you sow Popo Gare, what do you reap? Hundredfold of Popo Gare. If you sow breaking yam, what do you reap? Breaking yam. We are told in verse 13. And the man who sow in the land that is not favorable was great and went forward and grew until he became. You will grow until you become. Oh, I'm not hearing amen. Amen. When I was meditating over the scripture, I said, and time is coming when you must have was great and grew to become great. That when we say we need a hundred million in the church for projects, somebody said, tell G.O., may no bother the church. I'll send it to the account. I want to hear amen. Amen. I'm not talking about the money of frosters. I'm not talking about the money of sinners. I'm talking about those that are holy and wealthy. Oh, remember when I preached that message? Holy and what? Wealthy. I'm talking about those who are holy and what? Wealthy. wealthy. This man was not a sinner. He planted, Bible says, until he became great. What was the testimony in verse 14? And he had possessions of flocks, flocks, and possessions of heads, and great store of servants. And what? The Philistines, a whole nation, envy one man and said to him, Leave us, you are greater. You are mightier than us. People will see you living holy life, living righteous life, living pure life of purity, living life of fear of God, living life of humility and simplicity, life of crucified king, uh, believer. Then they will still see you greater than them financially, materially. Amen. They will come to you for solution. Amen. I want to hear louder. Amen. Amen. I was talking with one pastor one day. It's an evil man. He was telling me, you people are trying. In this mini, you are non-tribe. And your church, they grow. And the other one said, when they preach holiness, when I church today, It's not to my credit. We are not yet growing. If we are growing, look at the second floor. Look at the third floor. Is anybody there? Few people. If we are growing, if we are doing the holiness does not make a church not to grow. But it makes a church to grow. Bible says righteousness what? In certain issues. But sin is a reproach. Now, Jesus taught is okay. Before that, okay, we're going to talk about it. Jesus taught his disciples on caring and also um, on caring and. Um, Okay, and catering for his prophets, disciples, apostles, pastors, and ministers of his, that if any man 
any woman will give such a cup of water to cool their thirst of his servants. That person that offered that will automatically receive the prophet's reward. The Shunammite woman who was worthy woman in 2 King chapter 4, 8 to 17, used her money, her wealth, to build a house for prophet Elisha. Decorated the house and put everything the man of God needed. And she in turn received a miraculous son at, the, at her old age. And enjoyed all the grace that the prophet, prophet Elisha carried. Even when that his son died, Elisha came on board and restored the child back to life. Even when there was famine in the land, in 2 Kings chapter 8, 1 to 6, he told the woman, there's going to be famine in the land, he should take her son to leave the country or the community or the house, the village or the state or the nation. And she didn't doubt it, she left. And after the year of famine, as she was returning, she discovered that the neighbors, the communities, have taken away their land. Everything. As she was in such squad ma and fear and despondency, how do I recover? It was that day that the king called Gehazi. I was asking him, I've heard about Elisha, that man of God. I wasn't alive to see him. Tell me about the miracles, about the miracles, about his ministry. As he was telling the, the king how he raised the dead, how he gave the woman, uh, make a woman to be pregnant at the old age, and the child died, how he raised that child. The Bible says, as she, uh, like Gehazi was telling the king, behold the woman and the son coming to the king to say, please come and help me. And the guys said, hey, your royal majesty, this is the woman I'm telling you about. This is that her son whom Elisha raised from the dead. The king did no longer ask for them to pay anything to see him. The king gave orders, said, immediately, follow him. Follow her. I mean, he called others and said, follow this woman. Make sure from the day she left the country, her house, till now that she returned, those people that have been taking care of her house, she will give her all the praises. Amen. The same work of the woman she cared for Elisha. Amen. Was still doing what? Going on. The benefit was still on, even when Elisha died. So what you'll be doing today may outlive you. It will enter to your children. To your children what? Children. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, if you believe the word of God and believe the word of his prophet, it shall be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Jesus had the power to command money out of the mouth of fish. Is it true? Is it true? If Jesus wants to command money to fall from heaven, will it be possible? If Jesus has to command the land to swallow, to vomit money, is it possible? So, he did. In Matthew 17, he told Peter, go to the sea. Use your hook. Throw it into the water. The first fish that entered the mouth, open what? Open his mouth and what? Bring that money. Peter went and it happened. Peter returned with a bunch of money. He said, Jesus, now for fish, but let see this one. He said, yes. Go and pay our task. The remaining one, keep it for our upkeep. Yet, in Luke chapter 8 from 1 to 3, Bible says, yet, Jesus has women that were ministering to her need. I read Luke 8. Let me start from, from 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching 
and showing the great tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and certain women which had been healed of, of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Jonah, or Joan, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susan, and many others which did what? Minister unto who? Unto Jesus. Of their what? Of their substance. He has power to command money, has power to command food, has command, but yet they were still his disciples. Women gathering food, gathering fruits, gathering, ministering to him. Therefore, if you say you will not do anything today, God will open heaven and raise people that will finish the project. Nobody say amen. amen. I'm not saying from my brain. Jesus told the Pharisees, if you fail to praise me, God will raise up what? Stone! And cry out. So, this is for your good. It was for my good. What's it for my good? For my good. What's it for my good? For my good. If I hide this truth from you, God will hold me responsible. When David was to build house for God, he even gathered all things that he needed to build a house. He even told prophets that Nathan, Adam Nathan or uh, what is the other one? And he said to him, ah, do what is your heart, do what is your heart. But the Bible says in the night when he was sleeping, the Lord went to him and said, go and tell my servant David. I have seen his zeal, his love. He wants to build me a house. Tell him he's not going to build me a house because he shed much blood. His hand will be what? Blood of many people he killed. I cannot receive that building from his hand. So it is a privilege for you to give something that God accepts. It's, it is his son, Solomon, that will be there. But for him, I will not accept it for him. Despite that discouragement, this man gathered every material and gathered all Israelites. They gathered in a number, the leaders, and they contributed will, willingly. Oh, the one that touch me was the language of this man. He didn't say man of speech, that was on a BGO house. Now me motivate them. Now my money. Now me, now me make a gay house. No. Look at his language. Second Chronicle, I mean First Chronicle chapter 29. First Chronicle chapter 29. Verse 9 to 16. Then the people rejoice for that they offer willingly because with perfect heart, not hypocritical heart, not like Judas, not like Ananias and uh, Sephira who divided and tell lie, they offer willingly because with perfect heart they offer willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy, wherefore David blessed the Lord. Before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be, the, be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom 
O Lord, and thou art exalt, exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from America, from Europe, from where? Come from thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name, but who am I? That's a man of God. But who am I? Unworthy and profitable world. Seven, who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this kind of sort for all things come from where? Come of thee, and of thy own have we given it, given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as we are all our fathers. Our days are on earth, our days on earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding forever here. O Lord, our God, all this store, provision, this morning, this thing we gather, that we have prepared to build the world and house for thy holy, the house for thy holy name, commit of thy hand, and it is all worth thy own. Amen. So, if you desire to receive the highest reward of the prophet, then do the work you are asked to do for the prophet. If you desire to receive the blessing and reward of a pastor, general overseer, do the same work that you are asked to do. If you want the best and latest from God's throne room, chamber of his own commerce, and wealth of his own treasure, then treasure of his wealth, then it is for you to believe the report. In 2 Chronicles 20, 27, that you should believe in the Lord thy God, so shall you be what? Established. And believe what? His prophet, that thou may what? Prosper. In Hosea chapter 12, 13, say, he delivered the children of Israel by a prophet, and also preserved them by what? By a prophet. He delivered them by Joshua, preserved them into the land of promise by who? By, I mean, delivered them by Moses and preserved them into the land of promise by who? By Joshua. So you need your servant, the servant of God over you. You need his prayer. You need his, uh, grace from him. Everything that God wants to do with him in your life, you need him. So don't play churchy. Don't play knife. Don't play smart. Don't play game. Because if there's anything to do it, it is now or never. In John chapter 9, verse 4, Jesus said, I must walk the walk of it that sent me. Why? It is there. For the night cometh the hour when no man should do what? When no man should do what? Amen. Finally, Matthew 26. This was a woman called Mary who offered her best, her highest to the Lord, called alabaster boss of what? Ointment. For Judas and the rest of the apostles, they saw it as a waste. But they poured it at the feet of Jesus using her glory, which is her hair, to wipe and to dust the, the feet of Jesus. As before you can use your head to dust, you must bow. Your knees will be what? On the, your face will be on the, your heart, everything, your beauty, surrender at the feet of Jesus. And the apostle said, and the Judas, why this west? Why would you pay this thing and give the money to the poor? And Jesus said, don't mind them. Don't mind Judas. He's a thief. He carry our purse. He's a thief from it. He has poor every time, but this woman has done a great service for me. For this anointing is for my burial. And Jesus made a decree. Wherever this gospel of the kingdom will reach. Amen. 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 
what she have done for me shall be told in all the places. Are you ready? I'm done with the message. But it takes a crucified believer to serve a crucified Savior. It takes a resurrected believer to serve a resurrected Savior. For ordinary man, sinners can serve a living God. So service, not in the message I'm preaching up, the service and something I'm talking about is that you, if you are dead to the world, to sin, and to so many things, if you are dead to those things, then you can be alive in God to do the work of God. So how do you do that? You can't kill yourself. Amen? I say what? You can't kill your... So. Because Jesus did not kill what? Himself. You can't kill yourself because John the Baptist did not do what? Kill what? But something happened. What they did was to hand over themselves for the killing. What you're going to do is to hand over your life. Your money, your time, your talent, your all. And say, Lord, I hand over at the altar. Kill. Do it as you like. I am for you. So that as we finish this message, I will no longer do open luncheon. Amen? Amen? I have done my bit. If there is any Christian here, any believer here, I know God has spoken to you. What we are going to do now, I'm going to write what I'm going to give. Amen? But I'm telling you, you know me, that when we are dedicating this house, after the building, one conference like that, the son that I dedicated this church, I dedicated my house, but I never see house. You see, remember? I said, the son that was dedicating this house, this church, I dedicated my own house. I told you I'm dedicating my house because the Bible says, and Solomon built the house for the Lord, and the Lord built the world a house. I dedicated my house that day. I didn't see house. I didn't see land for that. But now, very soon, it will come to materialize. But you are the one God's going to use. Are you ready? So if you have to give us two million naira, don't look at anybody. The Lord will give you hundredfold of what? Hundredfold of what? And when it begins to happen to you, they thing say, do or go, No. It is hundredfold. Jesus said, we are going to get hundredfold. Isaac got what? Hundred.